Hey! Hey! I'm Mr. O, here with another moment at the Children's Museum of Houston. When I was in school at the start of most years, my math teacher told me I needed one of these for class, a compass. A compass is a math tool used to draw arcs and to draw circles. It's basically two legs, one with a pointed end, that's the steady leg, and one with a pencil or other writing tool, that's the adjustable leg, both connected at a hinge. For years, all I ever used it to do was to draw circles. It wasn't until high school geometry that I learned about its full potential, because that's when I studied constructions. In geometry, constructions is the exploration of how to draw lines, angles, and shapes accurately with only a compass and a straight edge, basically a ruler, but without using numbers. In other words, no measuring is allowed. But if you know your rules, you can create all sorts of shapes. So why no measurements? Well, that's thanks to the ancient Greeks and a mathematician by the name of Euclid. Over 2,000 years ago, Euclid documented much of what we understand about geometry in his book titled Elements. But 2,000 years ago, the ancient Greeks used a whole number system. They didn't have halves or fourths, so measuring and dividing numbers was nearly impossible. But the rules they created for constructions didn't need numbers, and they work with any size shape, which is why they still hold up even after over 2,000 years. Let's explore this a little closer. Science is fun, but it can also be dangerous, so always have a responsible adult helping you. Let's try some basic constructions. For this, you'll need a compass with a pencil. This is a pretty cheap one I got off a supply store, but there's some very nice ones you can purchase. A straight edge, or ruler will work just fine. Some pencils with some nice erasers, and of course, paper. Let's start with something basic, an equilateral triangle. That's a triangle with three equal sides and three equal angles. First, draw a line. The length really doesn't matter. Next, place the compass endpoints down on either end of your line. So draw an arc with the adjustable leg above the line. Move the steady leg to the other end of the line and draw a second arc so it crosses the first. Draw a line to connect your first line and repeat on the other side. So there it is, a triangle with three equal sides and three equal angles. So why does this work? Well, basically you're using the compass to show you all the possible locations where you can draw a line that's the same length as the original line. So anywhere along this arc, you can draw a line that's the same length as the first line. But if I were to draw the line, say, here, then the other line wouldn't be the same length. So no equilateral triangle. It is only here where the two arcs meet that allow the two new lines to be the same length as the first line. And like I said earlier, this rule will hold true no matter what size of line you start with. Whether I start with a bigger or a smaller line, I can use the same technique to draw an equilateral triangle. Now let's try a different but related shape, a regular hexagon, a figure with six equal sized sides. Draw a circle around a center point. Make a mark anywhere on the outside of the circle. Keeping the compass the same distance that it was to start with, place the steady leg on the mark. Now make a mark where the compass meets the circle. Move the steady leg to the new mark and make another mark. Now repeat that all the way around the circle. Finally, connect the marks to make your hexagon. So why does this work? Well, it goes back to our equilateral triangle. When you draw your circle, your compass is set to the radius of the circle, the distance from the center of the circle to the outside. And the radius is the same length wherever you go around the circle. When you make your mark on the circle, you create another line the same length as the radius. So, all three sides of this triangle are the same. It's an equilateral triangle. If you put six equilateral triangles together around a center point, you get a hexagon. And just like before, this same technique works no matter what size of the circle you use. But why do we learn constructions? After all, we have computer programs that draw shapes and circles for us all the time. Well, 
To be honest, the computer is still just a tool. It's nothing more than a fancy straight edge and compass. By using a straight edge and compass, we get a better understanding of the geometric principles at work. So whether you choose to be an architect, an engineer, a designer, whatever it happens to be, by understanding how a straight edge and ruler work, you're better able to use whatever tool it is, even if it is a computer. And also, it's a lot of fun. For example, try this. First, draw a circle around a center point. And don't worry if your compass slips. You can always erase and just use your compass to start your circle over again. Just remember to always mark that center point. Make a mark on the circle. Then, keeping the compass the same distance, place the steady leg on the mark. This time, draw an arc through the center of the circle. Now move the steady leg and repeat the arc at each intersection. And you'll end up with this cool looking flower. But what if we take it a step further? What if instead of arcs, you create a repeating pattern of circles? Really, the possibilities are endless. All you need to do is learn a few rules. And there are a number of websites out there to help you, like mathisfun.com slash geometry slash constructions. So go dig out your old compass and see what sort of shapes your imagination can construct. This has been another Oh Wow Moment from the Children's Museum of Houston. We hope your mom can come out to play.